I have paraphrased Charles Spurgeon when I've said time and time again that we should not doubt in the dark what we know to be true in the light. I still believe this, but it would be easy to doubt God's goodness as I experience increasing loss of function and paralysis in every voluntary muscle in my body. It gets pretty dark to realize that just two years ago I had a robust lifestyle, but now I am confined to a bed or my power chair, I can't walk, talk or eat, get out of bed, sit up, or stand unassisted, it has produced a level of helplessness that I could never have imagined, yet my mind is crystal clear, full of thoughts, but they are mostly trapped. Trying to dress myself or roll over in bed is like watching a beached whale, all effort and no progress. In the long dark night when the increasing constraints drive my thoughts to race in panic, I am reminded, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, I will not fear, for God did not give me a spirit of fear, but power, love and self-control. I simply cannot imagine this fight without the wisdom and truth of Jesus. Having experienced this night after night validates the claim for me, and leaves no doubt the Holy Spirit is present and standing a diligent watch over me and my family, watching prayers answered in the lives of others only goes to confirm God is good. I am often asked how a loving God could allow this disease to corrupt my brain and spinal cord and put my family through this. My Bible says we will all have affliction and challenges in life, good heavens, I'm not the first person at Watermark to experience chronic and life-claiming illness. A major difference may be that there is no effective treatment and certainly no cure leading to a dismal prognosis. But tribulation produces perseverance, character, and hope, and one of my hopes is that the way I am living this out will be an example of the grace I have received through Christ's obedience to the cross and his resurrection. My illness is a temporary affliction. Jesus promised in John 11 that Lazarus's illness would not result in death. If true for Lazarus, then true for all who claim Christ as the risen Son of God. I am asked if it is important to continue to serve others when going through this trial. Jesus was clear in Mark that he came to serve. I have learned in life there are givers and there are takers. I am made to serve. Even in my depleted form I can still pray for others and listen to a brother talk through an issue with a pointer to scripture for an answer, so although I must monitor and measure my energy, there is no excuse for ignoring the opportunity to serve someone, and I love to watch the deer in the headlights stare I get when I pose the inevitable question, are you praying with your wife every day, are you leading her well, or do we need to get her over here? It has been a joy to watch marriages improve when prayer together was a catalyst, it is clear that Christ is the hero. Roddy and I just want to share the good news that Christ was born, he was crucified, he died a horrible death, he is resurrected to live in the hearts of those who claim him as Lord and Savior. Sharing that good news takes my eyes off my afflictions and allows me to focus on the only truly important part of my life. When my mission here is complete, and I lay my body down, I am sure Jesus will pick me up. His love has been sufficient for me and I will understand that even more clearly when I see him. Focusing on Christ's achievement on my behalf certainly taps out any loathing and bitterness, and my heart is filled with God's love through the Holy Spirit, for this reason, I am affirmed, I am not a fool.